So now this is the final session of uh, today, so I'm having the honor to kind of close up these, uh, this event. Uh, my name is Robin, I'm the CEO and co-founder of iKingyLab. And we are a startup based out of Munich, and we've been around for five years, and I'd be excited to tell you a little bit more from the startup and consumer side about what we do and why it's so important to bring innovators like yours together in this room. So we have um, been around for five years and have been ever since pioneering and trying to re-envision the streaming experience for the metaverse. So we have a track record. We launch globally with partners like uh, Red Bull and Google in Asia with our partner LGU Plus and in the United States with uh, companies like Nickelodeon and Verizon. We have been right now working with a lot of telco operators, and therefore uh, we believe to have a fairly good understanding of you know, what are the challenges and the opportunities for operators. We are a Vira startup. Just uh, if, if you're not familiar with that, Vira is the uh, incubation uh, division of Telefonica, and they, have, they operate multiple offices and innovation and tech labs throughout, uh, across the world. We are in the Munich office, and uh, this is also where we are actually showcasing our technology as well. So I would like to do, what I, love, what I would like to do today is to walk you through some of the experiences that we have built, where we have pioneered the way we can combine streaming, TV, and augmented reality. So let me start off with uh, our yeah, one of our most recent projects that was done with Red Bull TV and Google, where we were enhancing a documentary of a guy climbing up Mount Kilimanjaro, and you were able to use your mobile phone to join this expedition virtually. So we delivered AR content that was, that was in sync with the documentary that you were streaming on your TV. It allowed you to be taken onto the journey to access additional information, 3D models, and place them even in your living room so you would see what the expedition crew saw. This project was also uh, recognized publicly by, uh, by the Television Academy, it was nominated for, for an Emmy, um, and also featured at, at Google I.O., which is Google's developers conference. And in this case, one of the challenges we had is how do we package content? And as of today, majority of the content is being already distributed via the application beforehand. So that means that, for example, in this Red Bull case, there were hundreds of megabytes of data that we had to package beforehand, distribute through the app, which allows us very, very little flexibility for last minute changes, but also comes with a trade off for quality, because the larger the package, the less people are likely to download it. So this is where 5G helps us and also um, other uh, technologies help us to deliver asset bundles on runtime, which means that they are being downloaded while the app is running, um, which allows us to increase quality where we then don't have to also stick to this rigid production schedule, but for example, do last minute changes because all those asset bundles are in the cloud and allow us really just to, to, to exchange um, those packets if we need um, independently. Another project that we did with Verizon in partnership with Capital Record was to think about the music experience. How do you, especially during COVID where real life events didn't happen, how can we still enable people to experience music? So we partnered up with Capital Record and Verizon and develop this experience where we enhance the music experience, a music video of an emerging artist called ASEAN, and have her perform in your living room for you personally. So what we did is we captured her at um, Verizon's 5G lab in Los Angeles with a partner company. We then put this, um, this uh, holographic rendering onto, uh, onto uh, the, the cloud where then based on your connectivity, we would deliver either a high quality HD version, which had easily a couple of gigabytes of data, or would serve you with a low resolution version. And in addition to that, 
this is what is one of the key, chain, key factors here is instead of rendering all the content and graphics on the device as it is happening today, we're able to use, for example, rendering in the edge to really deliver a more high fidelity um, experience. Because in the end, when we talk about the metaverse, it's about delivering an experience that is as close as possible to reality. And this is the reason why we need all those technologies. The reason is that we are seeing new form factors like these kind of headsets. In this case, this is a company called Enreal. Um, they already deliver uh, a really fairly lightweight AI headset, currently available with, um, in, in Germany as well as uh, selected telco partners. Um, and, and what they do is they rely on a lot of compute not being on the device. Because in the end, you have the trade-off. You want to have a, a high-quality display. You want to have long battery life. Yet, you don't want to have it tethered to a mobile device. So the only way to achieve that kind of really sophisticated um, triangular relationship is to outsource as much compute into the cloud or the edge as possible. Very recently, um, we, went, we were also selected by Qualcomm as a partner, as an early development partner for the Snapdragon Spaces. Snapdragon Spaces is Qualcomm's own toolkit to develop immersive AR and XR experiences. They are really committed to provide a reference design for all manufacturers where it's not like we had it in the past with Android, where you know you have a bunch of different specs on the hardware side, different display resolutions, different uh, compute uh, CPUs, processing uh, power, and this is what they are trying to, to accomplish: is providing a reference design which allows every developer to work on consistent user experiences, where it's not as fragmented as it is with a mobile space uh, on Android. So with that partnership, we are actually already developing a new use case where it's about AR as a feature, where you just put on your, ha your headset, your wearables at home while watching TV, and then you insert all the additional information and engaging content fully automated. As one example, how we work with Telefonica, for example, was at last year's 5, 5G Gipflow which is a 10 poll event where Telefonica is partnering with Sky and the sports team from Berlin to drive innovation and deliver new use cases. So what we did here is we used slicing to stream dedicated video camera feeds from mobile phones that were in the audience. So at the end, you were able to put on your headset and dive into different camera angles and those were streamed not through traditional infrastructure and the broadcast, but through dedicated slices, um, which were uh, designated for, for the camera feeds. This was uh, done in partnership with Sky, and we're um, yeah, very excited to see that um, it was also resonating very well with the audiences from the engagement metrics. And as we are all talking, well, like in the previous presentation, uh, was mentioned a couple of times, the metaverse. The metaverse, in the end, is just a, is a where, is where digital representations of us will, will, will live and exist in a way that is not comparable with what we're doing today. Because today, what we say it's Web 2.0, it's all centralized, it's concentrated with a lot of hyperscalers. This is where Web 3 is going to be a game changer. And our history in being a pioneering company and de uh, delivering kind of the streaming experience of the metaverse, now we are also looking and expanding into a new topic, which is non-fungible tokens. So non-fungible tokens are a new concept that regulates and uh, takes care of ownership for digital assets. And I'd be more than happy to, because I just also got like a 15-20 minute slot here today, um, and this is a whole different topic, so I'd be more than excited to speak to you at the, at the barbecue, for example, about this topic. 
um, because in the end, what we're seeing, or what we're witnessing today, is this transition from Web 2.0 to Web 3, where it's about decentralization and providing digital identities. And as we are providing, as I said earlier, the, the streaming solution for the metaverse, I would like to kind of close up this presentation with you know, telling you that um, the base concept of ownership in the physical world is transitioning to the digital world. So what you need to do is claim ownership over digital assets that will allow you to you know, uh, keep them, to sell them, or even to apply them. So one example to do here is, in the past, the only digital good that you could technically own were websites, were domains. So Apple.com is probably worth a couple of millions. And this concept of having ownership of over digital assets is what is becoming possible through non fungible tokens and the blockchain itself. And this is also how we see the, the future where those worlds are converging between mixed reality, augmented reality, engagement, new headset, and also the blockchain coming together for the streaming experience for the metaverse. So now I would like to open it up for questions. I saw that it was a little bit shy earlier, so I would encourage everyone to, you know, or, or comments or criticism. I'd be more than open to discuss. <laughs> No problem. Okay. Can we get a microphone now? Um, very interesting presentation and the uh, use case. And clearly, you're uh, trying to push the edge cloud to the to, to max. What are the limitations that you see today, or what are the limiting factors that prevent you to go further and uh, create more exciting uh, use cases? To be honest, it's, um, I think the most limiting factor right now is really the, the state where we are from a technology standpoint, because it's always about balancing out being really pioneering, using latest technology versus making experiences accessible for everyone. And you know, if you're talking to a customer like Red Bull or Google, they want to make sure that this is not an elite experience. They want to make sure it works across all devices, all different kind of um, networks, right? So I think it's really about managing expectations about what is possible, because everything I showed you today were projects that were real, they were live in reality, right? So you could already do this today. So now, take a little bit of imagination, think about how would this change if I would be able to just put on a headset that is powerful enough to deliver this in a, in a persistent way, in a high fidelity way, instead of holding up your phone, because, you know, I've done it long enough to tell you that holding up a phone for an extended period of time is just tiring. So this is why I think seeing now all those components, hardware, network, and infrastructure, as well as the users coming to a place where they start you know, being comfortable around this kind of technologies is very, very exciting and very powerful. Very good, thank you. Good presentation. A quick question on how do you make money? Is it that you develop interesting prototypes and smaller apps, or is there some other way to monetize your? Yeah, small. Sure. Uh, monetization, I think, is really a good point. And as uh, as the professor stated earlier, why we're seeing digital twins and adoption for this kind of technologies in the industry is just because it, it is easier to monetize and it's also created it's more value, it's more measurable ROI. Um, as for us, we are working with those partners. They are using their licensing, our toolkit, um, to build those experiences themselves. So this is where we where we basically make money. And I think, you know, to be honest, for everything related to monetization, this is also a, a space where a lot of things are just being tried out. Um, and therefore, I think the, the path towards monetization really is TBD, to be honest. Uh, but seeing already how things are changing. I mentioned earlier Web3 and, and, and how this is now entering a new, new era, basically. Even about monetization, because it's gonna switch from a centralized platform where people are complaining about Apple taking 30% of the cut, 
into a world where it's more a creator-based economy. So whoever is creating content or creating experiences is getting a, a larger cut. So I think this is also where um, we see a paradigm shift. Um, it has indeed like a direct impact on, on our business model because we are basically in this to, uh, to, to, to work with our customers and, and charge them based on a, on a kind of platform fee. Somebody else? Last chance. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Robin. We now come to the conclusion and afterwards to the barbecue. So please stay tuned a little while.